Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing what seems to be a discovery of a completely new type of an explosion discovered around a relatively well-known star system, but a type of an explosion that's never been seen before and that currently does not have a very good explanation. Or obviously it doesn't even have a good name just yet. But it's not really as powerful as a supernova, which is why it actually took some time to discover this and to identify this as a new phenomenon. And so let's discuss this discovery in more detail, but I guess let's start with how the scientists found this. It was using this beautiful airplane you see behind me, NASA's SOFIA, that unfortunately, as of today, has officially been retired. One of the most incredible telescopes ever created, the telescope that allows us to essentially position it anywhere on planet Earth, observing the night skies from the upper atmosphere, allowing it to ignore a lot of the atmospheric effects, and a telescope that has already discovered so many incredible things in the last decade or so. It was active for approximately 12 years and officially retired in September of 2022. But one of its last discoveries was this particular unusual explosion coming from an intriguing binary system known as V1047 Centauri. And this is what's known as a cataclysmic variable, a type of a binary object where one of the stars is a white dwarf and the other star is a relatively similar star to our Sun orbiting close enough where its external gas starts to be stolen creating a kind of accretion disk around the white dwarf, which then starts to produce a lot of unusual effects. And we actually discussed a relatively recent discovery coming from one of these objects, a record holder as a matter of fact, in one of the videos in the description. But there are definitely quite a lot of effects these objects can form. The most common effect and the most well known is what's known as a nova, or a classical nova to be more exact. Here's for example Nova Eridani that happened in 2009, and these particular events will always occur when there is just enough mass accumulated on the surface of the white dwarf, creating a kind of a hydrogen shell or hydrogen atmosphere that starts to accumulate, becoming thicker and thicker in time. In this case, the hydrogen is obviously coming from the donor star. Now, it doesn't always have to be hydrogen, sometimes it's helium, but it's really the hydrogen that then results in the high enough pressure and temperature on the surface where all of this initiates a thermonuclear reaction. It basically explodes. And this produces nova, which we can generally observe for at least a few months. But this doesn't really destroy the white dwarf or the donor star. As a matter of fact, this particular event can then repeat itself over and over again. And the scientists have actually discovered at least a few of these stars that seem to repeat very frequently. You can find some of these videos in the description. And so because this is such a cataclysmic event and because it seems to repeat itself, these are generally known as the cataclysmic variables. But they can also produce a lot of other explosive events in other regions as well. For example, we've been discovering quite a lot of emissions coming from this particular location, but more importantly, quite a lot of explosive events coming from the accretion disk as well. Another pretty well-known phenomenon coming from these particular stars is known as a dwarf nova. These are much more frequent usually, and in this case it's believed that it's coming from the accretion disk itself. In this case, if a white dwarf disk becomes unstable and starts to produce a lot of turbulence on the inside, some of the regions around the accretion disk can reach just the right pressure and temperature to once again initiate thermonuclear reaction. But because the region is also much more dynamic and also generally has a lot more turbulence, the length of these events will vary quite dramatically. Normally though, they only last for a few days. And more importantly, they're not as bright and a lot more difficult to detect. Here's one from a star known as U Geminorum. And so based on which events happen more frequently around these stars, these cataclysmic variables will usually have slightly different classification. But over the last few decades, quite a lot of these have already been classified and generally understood pretty well, with only some of these cataclysmic variables still producing some mysteries once in a while. And V1047 Centauri is pretty well known. It's essentially a classical nova cataclysmic variable. As a matter of fact, this particular nova erupted in 2005 as a classical nova, so it wasn't really particularly unusual until recently. But these new observations from SOFIA using infrared astronomy discovered something else unusual in 2019. For some reason, this particular star started to rebrighten, but in a slightly different fashion. At first, this rebrightening, which lasted for about three months, was very similar to a typical dwarf nova, possessing a lot less brightness and also suggesting that it was about to finish and start to dim. But instead of dimming, it kept getting brighter. The longest dwarf nova only lasted for 100 days. This one seems to have lasted for 400 days. With this particular event, and so if this was a dwarf nova produced by the accretion disk, it was definitely a record holder, but the scientists now believe it wasn't one. Mostly based on the study that you can find in the description below, 
that analyzed some of the temperature variation in this particular region, discovering several features that were not matching with previous dwarf nova. In this case, using both the data from Sophia, but also several other instruments as well. And it really seems like this was something in between a classical nova and a dwarf nova. Possibly a combination of different processes, or even some kind of a completely new type of an outburst. And these combination outbursts, or these unusual outbursts, have been detected in other cataclysmic variables, but very often in conditions where there is some kind of a giant star present orbiting around the white dwarf. In this case, there is no giant star. The partner is a star very similar to our Sun. And so it doesn't actually even fit the combination nova observed from some of the other stars. In this case, the scientists observed very high velocity features coming from the white dwarf itself, moving at approximately 2000 km per second. They also observed extremely bright optical emissions, and also long-lasting radio emissions, suggesting something exotic going on in this particular star system. And because all of this was happening not so long after the classical NOAA was observed in 2005, it seemed to be even more mysterious and difficult to explain. The scientists believed that future observations looking at the orbital changes of these two stars might help explain this further. At the moment though, they do believe that it most likely started with some kind of an unusual enhanced mass transfer into the accretion disk, which then caused some kind of instability, which for some reason then caused some of the shell on top of the white dwarf to start burning as well. So both the accretion disk and the surface of the white dwarf produced the nuclear explosion. Although in reality, it does seem to be a completely new astrophysical phenomenon that doesn't really have a good name or a good explanation yet. More about this once we actually understand what's happening here and once future studies discovered what really happened. Until then, well, I guess it's pretty sad that Sophia has now been officially retired, and so we're not really going to be getting more data from this telescope, but chances are that the James Webb telescope might help us understand what's happening here in the next few years. Until then, it's just going to be another mystery. And if you'd like to learn what happened here, make sure to subscribe, maybe share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Thank you for watching, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.